I'm rolling it, I'm going to push down and I might flatten a bit more. This is the first artifact Zack has ever helped to retrieve. 30 pounds of treasure. The roll of weapons grade brass is just what they needed. They'll take a small sample to a court in the United States as proof of their find to arrest the shipwreck and stake a legal claim to her cargo. The Savannah Dive has been a textbook operation. However, they'd hoped to be conducting a search on the Laconia, but it appears they've already made the voyage a success. In Odyssey's business, it isn't always finders keepers. Sometimes it's not who gets the treasure first, it's who gets the court first. Their competition may have beaten them to the Laconia wreck site, but the race is still on. Under the cover of darkness, Dan Adams takes the covert operation to the next level. The JL is creeping to the edge of the competition's radar range. It's been less than 48 hours since they first made contact with the mysterious ship. Yeah, I caught a little cat and mouse, you know, it's just a friendly little game. In this game, there are millions of dollars at stake. As they pull into radar range, the captain notices that something has changed. The other ship is no longer sitting over the target area. Range is 24 kilometers. their heading and confirms it. Ten knots. Their rival is on the move. I think it's more of a hurry up speed. I'd, I'd say that's as fast as they can get. The ship is leaving the site at full speed and they're giving no sign of having detected the John Lethbridge. Maybe they have problems and they have to go out of port and we can swoop in and, and uh, get on the side and be successful. Dan seizes the opportunity. If you can retrieve an artifact from the site and get it to port fast enough, Odyssey can be the first to establish a legal claim on the wreck. Secrecy is still the name of the game. The JL keeps right on the edge of radar range, while mimicking the movement and speed of a fishing trawler. We're gonna give him another hour and get some you know, separation and then make a run for the site. I'm trying to keep my excitement under control though until we're actually sitting on top of it. <laughs> At dawn's first light, the wait is over. Now speed is everything. Since they only have time for a single dive with their ROV, they'll first capture a sonar image of the wreck. Laconia was 183 meters long. So knowing how she settled on the bottom is the key to quickly finding artifacts that can be used to identify and play her. The Toefish's sonar beam will paint a detailed image of how this ship looks today. The huge passenger liner could tower 20 meters off the sea floor, so Dan is cautious on the first pass. I want to play it safe because it is such a large wreck. I didn't want to get tangled up in it. They can't see much detail but it gives them a rough outline so he can get closer next time. What I'll do is offset our line closer to the target now, hit it again 300 meters, and then we'll, then we'll just keep dialing it in closer and closer. The next pass reminds them how dangerous this wreck is. The sonar is suddenly running too close to the debris, so the crew hauls in their data cable, hoping there's no collision. No damage is done, but the scanning image shows that their gear crossed directly over the wreckage. It was a near miss. I was scared. <laughs> That's why the cable was coming in full more. They make a few more very careful passes, and it pays off. They capture images that are sharp enough to plot a safe course for the ROV. Got a really good image of it. We can clearly see the start where it's been broken apart. The debris trail behind it. Looks like the valve is pretty much intact. Now this is tremendous. This will make our dive so much easier because we'll actually, it's like having a roadmap for a shipwreck. 
Soon they'll get their chance to explore what might be the last remaining fragments of a tragic story. The SS Laconia was the luxurious queen of the Cunard passenger fleet. But in the First World War, she was converted to an armed merchant ship. It was a German U-boat that brought her down, firing two torpedoes, one of them straight into her engine room. Most of the men and women on board were able to escape safely in lifeboats. But 12 lives were lost when the Laconia disappeared beneath the waves. Including two Americans, a mother of... Dan briefs the tired team and prepares them for their one and only shot at the Laconia. Research, and he knows exactly where he'd look for Lagonia's treasure. The silver cargo would have been stowed in a special storage compartment in a particular place on the ship. Descending more than 300 meters into the darkness, the ROV arrives on the seafloor. What's that right there? What? Look at this. 